Hey guys, welcome to another video. This time I bring you my fastest Necrobit of team. This is the team that I'm currently running for the event that allows you to choose one type of room to drop on the dungeon for one hour straight. So yeah, you want to maximize your, your clear times here. You want to do it as fast as you can so you have the more chances of dropping, in my case, a will room on that dungeon. So guys, that is why it's very important nowadays to have a very fast team for each dungeon. In this case, I will explain step by step why this team works. Guys, the first thing you have to keep in mind is the attack order of your team. Your three Icarus will move first, then your Rogue, and after that your Aster will move. Now guys, you should keep in mind the transmog that you use. Now, in this case, we are using transmogs on two of our Icarus and we are also using a transmog on our Astar. And the reason for these guys is that we want our Astar to use the fastest transmog with her first kill that we have available. And that will be this particular transmog that I'm running right now. It's called the Poison Rose Astar and it moves quite faster than the regular animation of the first skill. That means that when we use a team-up attack and Astar is picked to go for the team-up, she will be moving faster and therefore we will be shaving off about 2 seconds every single run. And that is super important because it doesn't require you to improve your runes, it only requires you to transmog your Astar. That is huge, guys. Also, you have noticed that we have transmog two over Icarus. Well, that is because of how the team up attack works. When you use the team up, the units that will hit the enemy first will be the ones with the fastest attack animation. Therefore, the transmog, which provides a faster attack animation, has to be applied on the two Icarus that have higher accuracy and maybe lower damage. Therefore, you want your strongest Ikaru to move first so that you have you give him the chance of the other two defense breaking and therefore maximizing the damage that you deal. And that is why your Rogue is not transmog either. You want your Ikaru to defense break and then you want your Rogue to make full use of that defense break by destroying the enemy and hitting really hard. Guys, that is the same concept for the Dragon's V12 Ikaru team, that works the same way, guys. You want your, your, your higher accuracy Icarus to actually use their first skill first during the team up attacks, even if the, the, the unit using the team up will be your, your own Rogue, then you also want them to actually use their first skill first so that they get a defense broken opponent. Doesn't matter if you actually take two of them or not, because here you have the chance of not taking all your Icarus when they use the team up, they can even take two of the damage dealers. However, if that was the case, guys, you should not worry too much because you will have two super strong damage dealers attacking and the defense rate will not be that important unless you're, you're going on to one of the bosses, on to the mini boss or maybe the final boss. There, there, well, you want the defense rate to land because that will be crucial for your run to end below 35 seconds. Now, guys, about the builds. Well, you know that your three carries should move first, then your rogue, and then your after. Your three carries should be built exactly the same as you did for your Dragon's B12 team, so that you can easily interchange them on both teams. Actually, you can use the exact same unit. However, guys, if you are lacking damage here, you can run artifacts with damage on dark, because here you have dark enemies in the waves, unlike it happens on Dragon's B12, that you have neutral enemies on the waves, which are the crystals. Right here you have crystals, but you also have the strong units here, the golems, that are dark elements, and you want those ones to go down as fast as possible, because the crystals are, are kind of easy to kill, but those dark golems, those are the troll makers in this run. And speaking about the dark golems, guys, I told you that my team never failed me, even on over 2k runs, this team has never failed me. However, I try to make sure that it doesn't fail by adding vampire runes on my Aster. I gave her the highest possible damage I could on 100% crit rate on vampire runes to my Aster, and I, I added additional damage on dark on her as well. 
Also, on my artifacts, I run additional damage on team up attacks. That's it, guys, on co op attacks. I want my units to have that as well because that will almost always be on use, guys, since here we will most of the time be running or team up attacks. However, damage on dark is very, very useful here as well. So if you have an artifact with that, then please go for it. Guys, your rogue should not be on vampire. That is not mandatory, guys. You can run your rogue on, on a fatal set or on a rage set or even on a broken set. In my case, I decided to go for one of the strong damage sets and I added the I added a fight offset so that I can actually give more damage to the rest of my team as well but you know I gave him very good runes for this particular dungeon and that is considering that we don't need that much speed here in order for the clears and of course the speed lead on water will actually help us tune our Icarus so that they can move before the rest of the team so guys, that is pretty much everything I should tell you about this team and these are the results of rounds of 10. Remember, this team hasn't failed me yet and it's amazingly fast, guys. So yeah, guys, if this was useful for you, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, consider subscribing and recommend it to your friends. Guys, I really, really hope to see you all in the next one and if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Bye bye.